The word photography comes from two Greek words, which mean drawing by light. There is at present no field of human activity which is not directly or indirectly touched upon by photography. Hello everyone, this is Chemiverse. Here we are today to discuss how chemistry is related to photography. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Photographic process was not discovered overnight. It took many years and a lot of efforts from several scientists to discover the process. Let us have a historical insight. The early alchemists used to know about the effect of light on silver salts. At the beginning of the 19th century, Wedgwood successfully reproduced images as negatives on paper, impregnated with silver salts. A few years later, in 1819, Burschel discovered a unique property of thiosulfate, which we call is the fixing property. Thus, he set the doors open for the first pictorial reproduction, and in 1839, for the first exhibit, called Photographs, the same year, Daguer, a French scientist, published his formula for manufacturing of the familiar Degria top. A few more years later, Maddox discovered the gelatin dry plate. Vogel, in 1807-3, found that light sensitivity of silver halide crystals is greatly increased by the dye molecules absorbed by them. Transparent roll film was introduced by George Eastman in 1889, and the famous Rattan panchromatic plates were introduced in 1906. Now it is time. We looked at the photographic process. Silver halides are the most widely used sensitive substances in photographic processes. These light-sensitive silver salts are prepared in the dark as aqueous gelatin emulsion. Certain dyes, various classes of sulfur and gold compounds, anti-fogging agents, hardening agents, stabilizers, coating aids, etc. are added with the emulsion. After some additional treatments, this emulsion is coated on a film support of cellulose acetate, polyester, or glass. Exposure of the emulsion in a camera results in a photochemical reaction on the surface of the silver salt crystal. In silver halide crystals, internal dislocations act as electron traps. When some energy in the form of light is absorbed by the silver halide, a free atom of silver is liberated. This silver atom acts as a center which invites more photolytically generated silver atoms until a monopositive tetra-silver ion is formed. Thus, photolytic silver constitutes an image and forms effectively in proportion to the incident light of the color to which the crystal is sensitive. Thus, an object is produced in the form of a dark image. The result of this process described here is negative. The density of the image depends upon the number of crystals exposed. Positives are generally produced by first developing the negative silver image and then dissolving the silver image in an oxidizing solution or bleach. The residual complement of silver halide, which has the configuration of the positive image, is uniformly fogged either physically or chemically, and then developed to give a positive silver image. Silver halides of the emulsion supplies the film with sufficient metallic silver when the developer is employed. As a result, we obtain a visible image from the negative. Now, let's see how black and white materials are processed. Modern developing solutions contain mainly four functional constituents. They are an organic reducing agent, a preservative, an accelerator, and a restrainer. The reducing agent chemically reduces the silver halide to metallic silver. Chemically, they are substances like polyhydroxide, amino hydroxide, polyamine derivatives, etc. Preservatives guard the developer against air oxidation. The most common preservative used is sodium sulfide. Accelerators increase the alkalinity of the developing solution. Eventually, the activity of the reducing agent is increased. To maintain the speed of the developer, a restrainer for example, potassium bromide or benzotriazole is employed. The processing of black and white photographic materials is ended by a wash. After washing, the materials are dried with heat. This is how we get what are called photographs. In one of our next videos, we will see how colored photographs are produced. Stay tuned, stay connected, thank you.